Do you feel stuck in your faith? Do you feel like you you know you're a Christian, but when you try to seek out God and, and, and serve Him, you feel like you're not fully living the life that Christ has for you? That you want to do great things for God, but when it comes to that moment, you fall back into old habits, into old sins, or just into being inactive, not fully living there. Well, if you're in this place, then I believe you're wandering in the desert. Now, what I mean by that is A.W. Tozer was a pastor and theologian back in the 1800s. And during his life, he was obsessed with the idea that Christians were not living to their full life that Christ had for them. That they were stuck in this place that was inactive spiritually, that they were missing out on so much. So he wrote and pushed for people to figure out what this was. And he called this greater life the deeper Christian life, or he also called it the crucified life. And his books have impacted me in so many ways. I encourage you, I have a couple in the description, check them out. But one of the things that he pictures in this book is for the people that feel stuck, that feel inactive, feel like they are being led more by their flesh than they are by the Spirit within them, the Holy Spirit, but know they know Jesus, but they're not living fully in it. That he says that they're most likely a carnal person. Now what I mean by that is he says there's three people in this world that exists. He says there's a natural person, the carnal person, the spiritual person. See, the natural person is the one of this world, the one we're born into, one that's sinful, that's not regenerated by Christ, has not received Jesus or salvation, but is living fully for their selfish and sinful nature in this world. That is what is controlling and guiding them. On the flip side, you have the spiritual person. This person has been saved and regenerated in Christ. They're a mature Christian that has their life, their decisions, led and controlled by the Holy Spirit that lives within them. But then there's a carnal person who's neither spiritual or natural because they're not natural because they know Jesus, they've been saved, they've received Christ's salvation or regenerated. They're no longer a slave to sin. But then they're also not spiritual because in the end, they're not mature in their faith and they're still being led by their lower fleshly nature and they're not being led by the spirit that lives within them. They're still living off the impulse of their flesh than than by the desires that the spirit should be enabling in them. And there's so many Christians and A.W. Tozer believes there's so many people in America that are dealing with this right now and you could call it lukewarm or you can call it carnal, but what it is is a wasted Christian life. That you'll go to heaven and all that you have will be burnt. All you that you did on life will be burnt in front of you and you'll get into heaven. But none of thing that you live for would have mattered or made a difference in the kingdom of God. That scares me. I don't want to be that person. I don't want you to be that person. I don't want your friend to be that person. And I want you to get out of that place. I want your friend to get out of that place. I want to never be in that place in my life. And I know there's been time where I've been inactive. And so what I see here is those people exist in this world and the Old Testament actually provides us a picture of these people. See, the natural person is Israel, is the Israelites when they are in Egypt. They're enslaved for 300 years, hundreds of years. They're enslaved with no connection to God. In the same way, the sinful person, the natural person is enslaved to their sin and has a complete disconnect from the God that created them. But then comes Moses, and Moses shows up, and the Red Sea is the picture of the new life, the new generation that is in us. What I mean by that is when they reach the Red Sea, the army of those that formerly enslaved them is coming towards them to capture them and bring them back into their old slavery. And God uses Moses to part the Red Sea, open it up so they could travel to the other side on dry land. And as they go across and they finally make it all the way to the other side, the army had followed them and the waters collapsed. And within an instant, what they were enslaved and formerly enslaved to was destroyed in seconds. They went from being enslaved in danger from this nation coming upon them to being a free nation within a moment. In the same way, we, are, we will go from a, a being enslaved to our sins, from believing in Jesus and becoming free from those sins that we were enslaved to in a second by the blood of Jesus. That's the beauty of the cross that you can see in the Israelite story through the Red Sea. But after this, this is where we as Christians and the Israelites get it all twisted. Because the question is, did God free the Israelites so that they can just be f- 
free? No, no, he, he freed them so that he would call them into something, into a greater life. He had promised the promised land to the, their generations, generations before to their forefathers, this place for them to live, their spiritual homeland that God provided. And he was sending his people there. He was calling them out of slavery, not just into freedom for freedom's sake, but into something even greater. In the same way, God doesn't call you out of freedom from sin just to be free from sin, to just then live your life. He calls you out of freedom to sin, to now live your life for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.15 speaks of this, that Christ died for us, and so now we live for He who died for us so that we may live. Our life is not our own, it is Christ, that now our life is living for Him, the greater, the crucified life, one that lays our life down for the kingdom of God. But we don't get this, and neither did the Israelites. Because look at the Israelites. From the desert to the promised land was an 11-day journey. 11 days for a whole nation with kids, with grandparents, with grandmas, elders, with livestock, with all their food and supplies. A whole nation of families go across this desert in only 11 days. And they get to the edge of the promised land. And they're scared in some form or fashion. That's okay. And, and, but then they send in 12 spies to check out the land. And the 12 spies see a land that is so fruitful that they saw fruit there that took two men to carry a branch of grapes off a vine back because the fruit was so large and so just, just good there. They also found that this land was full of animals that could be livestock that could provide milk for them, just full of livestock that they could eat, that they could use for milk, for wool. They also found that the land was so fertile that it was so bountiful to be able to use for harvest and for farming. They found so much water to drink that would be healthy for them to be able to use for their nation. It was the ideal place for them to be as a nation. And then these spies come back and they inform these people about all these great things, but they're stuck on one thing. They don't believe they can beat the people in the land. See, they saw big walls on cities. They saw men that were much stronger than them, militaries that could destroy them with many more people that could fight. And they looked at their people and they said, we can't beat them in military force. But in this, they weren't doubting their own strength as Israelites in a nation. They were doubting God's promise to provide what he said he would. Just like when we know that God can use us, God has told us he can use you in amazing ways spiritually and to impact other people's lives. But you have doubted yourself. But in doubting yourself, you ain't, you're not doubting yourself. You're doubting that God can work through you. You're doubting God, not yourself. And that angers God like it did in this situation. And these people get all irrational. These, the response of the Israelites from this report, they all freak out. They even try to raise up a new leader, overthrow Moses, and head back to Egypt to be enslaved again. They even talked about, well, let's not even go into Egypt, like we're, or let's not even go back to Egypt, or let's not even go to the promised land. Let's just hang out here because like we're free at least. Because they missed the point. You don't have freedom for freedom's sake. There's something better out there for you that they're missing. They'd even then say to Moses, and they're mad at him, and they say, why did you bring us here? They're going to they're gonna rape our wives, and they're going ki- to make slaves out of our children. There's, we have no idea that this is going to take place. They're jumping to conclusions in fear because they're scared to trust and have faith in God. And God is angry because of this. He wants to destroy all of them, but instead he sentenced them to 40 years wandering in the desert that they, a generation would never enter the promised land that God has for them. Get this, they missed out on God's plan for their, their, their kingdom, their nation. So they wandered the desert. Think of this, this desert that's only 11 days of a path wide. They wander in it for circles for 40 years. So one day they, they, they wander and they're a little bit closer to where they were enslaved in Egypt, looking at the Red Sea. And then another day they travel a little bit closer and they can see the promised land, the place that they're supposed to be. And then another day, they travel a little bit farther away from the promised land, a little bit closer back to their enslavement. The same way in our spiritual lives, this is the exact picture of us in our carnal spirit where we're one day a little bit closer to that sin that we were slaves to and we're still living in our fleshly nature. And then, you know, a season goes by and then we're a little bit closer to the promised land God has for us, but we're not fully there. We're just, you know, on the outskirts 
of that promise. And then we wander back to our enslavement to sin. And what that is, is a wasted life that never experiences all that God has for you. If you're in this place where you feel like you're wandering in the desert, the problem is, is that you have been denying God, His trusting Him and believing that He can use you spiritually. But He can. He wants you and He can use you and wants you to understand the greater depths. But you have to trust Him when the waters are choppy, when you can't see how you can beat the person in front of you, the nation that's against you, the doubts you have about yourself, that He can do it. I almost failed my, my third grade class because I was so bad. I had multiple learning disabilities. I could barely read. I, I, I became the faith in ninth grade with a reading level of a sixth grader, never reading a book all the way through, but always skimming and cheating my way to get through classes. First book I read was the New Testament. And then God called me, and then I had a writing disorder also, so that I don't know how to write things. I, had a, I went to speech class as a kid, and then God called me into ministry, brought me into a major in college, where my teachers in third grade said I would never make it to college. He brought me into a major in college that was solely writing and reading, what I was the worst at. Public speaking, I couldn't do that. I sat up in classes, I was brought, I, I couldn't even, I, there's times where I didn't even finish a speech in ninth grade before I got saved because I was so nervous and I, and I was shaking so bad. And now like, that's, that's what God's called me to do on a weekly basis is to preach His Word. It's not because of me. It's because God is good. And the same thing is for your life. You have to step out each and every day. Be uncomfortable and decide to choose God's kingdom and Jesus' work in your life over anything else. And that's easy to say and it's hard to implement and do. But you have to look at each day and say, God, this is yours. How am I going to live out and take my next step into the promised land you've given me. This is why I made this channel. This is why it's called The Walk, because I want to help people take their next step in following Jesus. And if this is you, I, I encourage you, subscribe, like this video, share this with others, help yourself by looking at videos, getting into your word daily. If you have questions, comment them below on how I can help you by making a video. Get plugged into a local church and start making disciples and reaching the lost in your neighborhood. And I have videos about how to ask questions and start conversations with the people that are lost. Check those out. If you want to know how to do a simple Bible study, I have a simple Bible study video that I'll leave at the end of this video, but you have to seek out the Lord and what He has for you. Don't keep wandering in the desert. Thank you so much for being here. If this was helpful, I know it's been a really long video, but if it was helpful in any way, please subscribe. We're seeking to help people um, find out what Christ has for them. And if you want a video on how to watch a video on how to do a simple Bible study that you can also lead other people in for good discussion, uh, that video is right here. Um, and, and the same for a video on how to start five questions to start a spiritual conversation with somebody. If you, you want to start living your faith out with boldness and evangelism. But thank you so much for watching. Peace out.